Hey there, folks. Professor Paul Markle here, host of Student of the Gun Radio. And you're like, yeah, I know that. That's why I tuned in. That's why I'm here. Well, I am talking to you right now uh, from the road. Yes, we are on the road. It is training season for us here at Student of the Gun. We're going to be conducting two separate Beyond the Band-Aid, Stop the Bleeding traumatic medical classes this coming weekend. And then we will be traveling a week after that, a week after we do the Beyond the Band-Aid classes. We're going to be traveling. Well, we're not really going to be traveling. Some people are going to be traveling. They're going to meet us in Wyoming. We will be on our favorite range, our favorite thousand yard range. Actually, when I say it's a thousand yard range, I'm kind of underselling it because we have target berms out to 1,000, 1,400, and one mile. Now, I understand that not everybody's rifle will shoot a mile, and uh, and that's cool. But we're going to have about 10 students of the gun who are going to join us in Wyoming, and we're going to have a couple of days of long-range precision rifle. We're going to have a good time out there. And if you've been paying attention, and if you've been paying attention to student of the gun, you'll notice that we've been putting a tremendous amount of effort into the Student of the Gun University training programs. I've been writing my little fingers to the bone here lately. I published the Student of the Gun Instructor Development Manual, and then hot on the heels of that, I published the Precision Rifle Range Book, and hot on the heels of that, I published the Martial Application of the Pistol Book, And soon to follow will be the martial application of the shotgun book. That's fighting pistols and fighting shotguns. And you can only imagine, you're like, oh, let me see. Pistols, shotguns. Is he going to do a rifle one? Yes. Uh, I'm going to do a martial application of the rifle book. Now, all of those books, all of the... uh, All of the material that I'm writing is going into, it's going to be uh, part of our live training courses. We're going to be doing live training courses called MAP, MAS, and MAR, Martial Application of the Pistol, Shotgun, and Rifle. Now, what we're planning to do, I'm going to give you guys a little look behind the curtain because I love you and, and, uh, you know, we're friends. I'm going to show you a little bit of a look behind the curtain. What we've been planning for several months now is to create a training program like no other. Now, most of the time, most often, I've been in this game for 30-plus years now. I've been going to professional firearms training since 1986. You do the math. And the standard traditional way to do firearms training is you book a seat in a class And then you go to that class, and then you will spend a portion of your time in the classroom learning about the the fundamental aspects of that art, whatever it is, rifle, shotgun, pistol, medical, whatever. You learn all about that. You spend classroom time. You learn about range safety. You learn about things like justifiable use of force and the rules of deadly force, and that's all very important stuff. It's very important to have a student who is well-versed and understands the reasoning behind what they're going to be doing on the range. Generally, it's a bad idea to just take people and throw them on the range without ever sitting them down and you know saying anything to them. Uh, and that's fine. That's the way it works, and that's the way it's always worked uh, in firearms training. If you guys have ever gone to firearms training, you're like, yep, that's what we did. We went to my class. You know, I went to the first pistol class, and we spent about two hours in the classroom. Then we went out to the range. We spent the rest of the day there. And then the next day, we went to the classroom for a couple hours. And then we spent the rest of the day at the range, and so on and so forth. And that's how it always has gone. Now, with Student of the Gun University, what we're able to do and what we've been doing, we actually ran it as kind of a test bed with the Legion of Michael Distance Learning Training Program. If you guys have been with us for any length of time, you know about the Legion of Michael Church Security Program. Now, I was a bodyguard for a number of years for going, I don't know, 12, 14 years, 15 years. I did professional executive protection and so forth. So I took that information and I put it into a program called the Legion of Michael. 
And what we decided to do several years ago is like, okay, what we want to do is we want to get this information out to as wide or as broad of an audience as possible. And obviously we use the internet. We used uh, what we had to deliver. We can deliver it digitally. You know, we can deliver, deliver the video lectures and the testing material. And of course there's a book, there's an actual physical book that goes along with it. The Legion of Michael book, Defending the Flock that I wrote. And we support that, of course, with the Legion of Michael podcast. Now, we did all this as essentially a test bed to make sure that it worked. Well, it does. It does work. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to launch Student of the Uni- as, excuse me, Student of the Gun University as a full service immersive learning experience. We will include home study or distance learning, as well as residency training or on the range with us. The good thing about that is you will be able to sign up for our training programs, whether it's the pistol, rifle, shotgun, precision rifle, whatever. There's going to be a lot of stuff to come. You'll be able to sign up for that, and you'll be able to start learning immediately. You, we will deliver you the material to start the learning process, to start in with the course immediately. And then once you finish that, once you finish the distance learning program, then, well, you're eligible to come out to the residency class. And obviously, we will have a calendar of residency courses, whether it's pistol, rifle, shotgun, traumatic medicine, precision rifle, whatever it happens to be. So that is what we're doing. And by doing that, what we're going to be able to do is we are going to be able to maximize the amount of time that we spend with you on the range. Because if you think about it, and if you've been thinking about it, and if you're like, oh, hang on a second, what's he talking about here? If you think about that, well, you'll say, wow, by the time I get to Student of the Gun, by the time I get to Student of the Gun University where I'm face-to-face with Paul and Jared and our adjunct instructors, By the time you're there, you will have already gone through education and instruction and testing so that you'll have the normal classroom stuff, the stuff that you normally go and sit down in a classroom and do. You're already going to have that. That information is already going to be in your brain. You're going to be ahead of the curve. So by the time you get to us, we can maximize our time on the range. And of course, by delivering the material to you in a a distance learning home study program, you'll be able to do it at your leisure, at your own pace. Some people, I'm sure, will finish it in a couple of days. Some people will finish it in a couple of weeks or what have you. And we will be able to proctor and monitor your progress and so forth. We put a lot of effort into this, uh, Jared and Zachary and I, over the last couple of months. Uh, If you've noticed, we've been kind of like a, I've been kind of a moving target, um, And that is why, and I'm here to tell you, I thought, what the heck, Uh, we're going to be on the road for several days. Like I said, teaching will be uh, in Utah, will be in Wyoming. And uh, I wanted to take this time just to give you a heads up and and let you know what's going on with Student of the Gun and Student of the Gun University. It's really time for all of us to get spun up. If you've been listening to me for any length of time and you're like, yeah, I know I need to take some training sometime and I will, I I swear I will sometime. Sometime is now. The, The time is now. If you have not paid attention to the world around you lately, the time for you to have skill and confidence and ability is now. Not in a year or two or whenever you get around to it. The time is now. And so in order to cater to that, we have been working very diligently to come up with a home study distance learning program as well as a residency training program to go with that. Now, all of this uh, dovetails right in with the brand new product that that we just released, the, the brand new podcast listening product called Student of the Gun University. Uh, comes out A new episode comes out every Thursday. I hope you guys are enjoying that. If you're not enjoying it, well, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead and uh, get better taste and then come back and listen to it again. <laughs> who is this guy? Yeah, you know who I am. So that is what's going on. That is the what's what. It is now training season. 
and we've talked about this previously. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of work previously trying to help people out with the Beyond the Band-Aid classes and the rifle classes. But what we're able to do now uh, through the magic of modern technology, we're going to use modern technology for good as opposed to evil, as most companies use it for. And that is that. So Student of the Gun University is expanding dramatically. We're going to be able to deliver material to you wherever you happen to be so that you can get started now. You know, how many times have you made excuses? I know you guys out there. I see you. I see you. There you are. You see, you look at a training calendar for a school, and you're like, mm, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in six months, or I don't know what I'm going to be doing in nine months. I don't want to commit to that class right now and not be able to go. So what do you do? You don't do it. You don't sign up for training, and you don't start learning. Well, with the way we're going to be setting up Student of the Gun University, you're going to be fresh out of excuses because you'll be able to begin learning right away, immediately. Oh, wow, you just took my excuses away, Paul. That was mean of you. I know, that was mean of me. So it is training season, student of the gun. Jared and Zachary and I uh, were going to be uh, extremely busy. Now, one of the things that we are going to be doing, uh, as you may have imagined, because I wrote the student of the gun instructor development manual, is we will be hosting uh, instructor development classes. The first one that we're going to do is going to be an invitation class, uh, and that invitation will go out to our dedicated grad program members. So you're like, oh, that's not fair. Well, yes, it is. It's completely fair because grad program members have an investment in the program. There you go. So uh, if you're a grad program member and you're interested in that, you're like, ooh, ooh, me, Mr. Cotter, uh, you might want to send Jared a note or a letter and say, hey, when is this instructor development class going to be and uh, when can, how can I get into it? All right. Like I said, Jared and, and I are going to be on the road. We're going to leave Zach in the shop to watch over things, and I'm going to send him this piece of audio, and I will trust Zach because he is my trusted producer to do with it whatever he wishes to do. I imagine he'll give you a little bonus, and he'll probably – thank and acknowledge all of our sponsors who make this happen. So ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, this is your host, Professor Paul Markle, reminding you that you're a beginner once, a student for life. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Imports Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Oh, man. So that's, that's, my, uh, that's my op-ed for the beginning of this show. Duracoat Finished Firearms, brought to you by a little company called Duracoat. And uh, if you'd like to be... Why did I forget that there was a, a bump music for that? I don't know. Uh, it's late in my brain. It's late. Yeah, we're past our bedtime. It's late and it's past my bedtime. We, my we seem to much. forget that there's bump music a lot lately. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you'd like to do a coat like a pro, you can. Uh, you can go to, you can follow the link. It's in the show notes. Uh, go to DuracoatUniversity.com. Well, it's not Duracoat University, but yeah. You can go to the Duracoat University link and learn to to uh, refinish guns and gear and things and anything you really want to, like a professional, uh, Duracoat has more products, SKUs, offerings, things than any of the people who pretend to be their competition. Uh, you can, you know, as an American, you have a choice. You can choose to use an inferior product or you can choose to use Duracoat. So it's, it's that easy. You can do whatever you want. Uh, when it comes to color choices, we had we had a, a conversation about uh, it was just a real quick thing about uh, vehicle colors and whether you know what color should you paint if you were going to redo a vehicle what what color scheme should you redo a vehicle? Uh, most people don't like white because white shows dirt, you know. But if you notice, Jared, you know why all the work trucks and gov vehicles and so forth, you know why they're white, right? 
because it reflects the heat. No, it's a, no because it's the cheapest paint there is. Oh, you can have any color you want as long as it's white. Yeah, yeah. the The reason that all of your generic work trucks are just plain white with a sticker on the side is because that's the cheapest. That's the cheapest thing they can do. Um, is just slap plain old white paint on it. Uh, if you want fancy stuff, you want different colors and what have you, eh, it's going to cost you a little bit more. But if it's just plain old white, that's the least expensive thing. Um, if if you're going to, if you are in an area, and it, it might not be a big deal to you. May you say, I, I live in an area where it's relatively cold and whatever, and, and I don't care. Uh, but black black does absorb heat. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe but black absorbs heat, set an M16A2 down in, in the sun and then walk over and grip, pick up the handguards. It's, that sucker's hot, man. Uh, well, I mean, in the summer when the sun's out. If you do it in the winter, it won't be like that. But uh, I, we, we just had a, we had a color conversation, uh, and I thought that was interesting. Years ago, the you guys, you remember what... Jared, do you remember when the Ohio State Highway Patrol had these metallic silver gray, metallic gray uh, cruisers? That was their cruisers were all a metallic silver gray. And they yeah. stopped doing it. You know, how they stopped doing I it. I don't remember what year, but no. Yeah, they stopped doing it because they, they did the math and they realized that they could save like something hundred thousand a year with when they replace vehicles by just painting them white and putting stickers on the side versus that that special because they were ordering this special paint and it was costing them like an extra umpteen thousand dollars per vehicle to do that uh and they and believe it or not in a, in a moment of weakness they exercised a little bit of fiscal responsibility uh, it's probably all gone by now they're like it's, it's the peasants money screw them Are we we'll still just write more ticket uh-huh are we still talking about Derek? We're talking about color choices. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know about colors. I was just wondering. Um, and, and a lot of people see, a lot of people don't think about that. You're like, oh, you know, red, black, gold, whatever. It's all the same. doesn't matter. Um, so I, I, I just thought that was interesting. I didn't have anything hardcore to talk about. Uh, but we, it, we were talking about colors the other day. And I thought, well, it's Derek and Derek colors. And let's talk about colors. So there you go. Oh, go to check out Duracoat University. Go to studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. Yes. Take you exactly where you need to be to learn more about it. Uh, while you're on that page, you can find any color under the sun. If it's not, it's, if it's not a choice that pre-exists on the site for you, you can send them a sample or call them and they can get you the color that you need. Yeah, that's something that we don't ever often talk about. Uh, but if, if so you talk about, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But no, seriously, if you have a an ex, if you have a company logo that is an exact color of blue, red, green, orange, whatever, and the Pantone, I think, is. The yeah, one. you have to get them the exact. It's a it's a color game number. It's like, you know, if they don't have green 81 or blue 67 or. Yeah. Sounds like I'm calling plays. Green 81. Yeah. Blue 67. Hut, if you've got hut, a logo, hut. you likely have a branding guideline that has the hex color, the RGB, the CMYK, the Pantone, all that stuff. Just send them that information. RGB. So have it all, and you'll probably be good to go. People people are like, what? People are saying, there's people out here like, colors don't have numbers. I was listening to this guy on the radio and he was trying to tell me that colors had numbers. That's funny. And I'm like, I'm not listening to that guy anymore. If you would like to use trying to our, trick me. Uh, student of the gun color and design, it's 007580. 0075 Alpha Delta. It's a student of the gun blue. It's student of the gun blue. There you go. Numbers don't have colors. Colors don't have numbers. <laughs> yes, they do. That would be a person operating. Uh, that that's probably most of our audience actually is people that are not digital gurus. So it's one of those things where oh, you spend SOTG. a lot of time in design, and you're like, yeah, duh, duh, colors have numbers. Yeah, if you're an course. artist or whatever, but if you're somebody that produces something physical in the real world, then you you might not know. Well, if you if you're painting but now stuff, you do, you know, and that's why we're here. If you're painting stuff, you know, you're like, no, I went to Sherwin Williams, and the col the colors are all like 
Autumn harvest. We do know that, um, well, absolutely Forest for sure, meadow. Duracoat matches our colors because we've done it before. Yep. But um, if you're, maybe you don't want to use Duracoat for a wall in your house. Probably. You then go ahead and do that. But if you don't, then we know Sherwin Williams also matches or can find and, and get the pink color that is the student of the gun blue. Yeah. Hey, so you're hey. welcome. Uh, if you want to talk about black and silver, silver and black, well, if you go to SOTGGiveaway.com, that's SOTGGiveaway.com, there is a black and silver Takarov TPB, TBP, that's Tango Bravo Papa Marine Shotgun, and uh, hey. you have 15 days. Sorry, I just thought of this right now. My brain thought of it. Did we ever see or hear from the winner? That won the uh, exclusive pistol with the sights on it at NRA show. No, we haven't yet. But well, if you're listening and you're that winner, please let us know. Info at studentofthegun.com. Yes, yes, indeed. All right. So uh, you guys have 15 days and, thir- and three hours to sign up for that. Go to SOTGGiveaway.com, put in your info, sign up. You could be a winner. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Uh, High Point Firearms makes guns. And that is that is a statement that I'm willing to make right now at this moment in time. <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting for the... Uh, the the new and improved yeet cannon to uh to arrive so yeet yeet, yeet. uh we because we were right in on that one well we were right there uh at the very beginning uh, when <laughs> we were there for the deba- what what became i would say a debacle <laughs> Uh, you got to be careful what you ask for because sometimes you get it yeah <laughs> And that's that's something that we learned. That's something we learned. And like I said last week, they were they were just about all caught up. And then the criminals in D.C. decided to start acting up again because they're worried that their power was slipping away. All right. If you are a new listener and you should be a new listener, maybe you're not a new listener, but I'm sure there's some of you out there, some of you out there on planet Earth. Maybe maybe you are sitting uh, in a radio shack. Uh, in the uh, the principality of Sealand, and you're listening to the show. Well, if that's the case, listen louder, because Zach's going to tell you, or he's going to let you know what you should do. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Sierra, Delta, Sierra, Sierra, Delta, Sierra. That's the SDS. And if you go right now to uh, SOTGGiveaway.com, that is SOTGGiveaway.com, you will see the June giveaway. And the June giveaway is a Takarov Marine, not... um, the uh, jarhead marine, but like water type marine. What they did is they gave it a stain. They put stainless steel instead of blue steel. Uh, and the part that's are uh, it's a semi-automatic magazine fed bullpup shotgun. And uh, rather than blue steel, it is stainless steel. Uh, or I don't know if it's stainless or it's chromed or nickeled, but uh, either way, it looks really cool. And it is the giveaway of the month. And all you have to do is click here. There's a little button that says click here. If you don't know how to click the button that says click here, then you're not eligible. But if you click here, put in your information and you will be eligible to win that gun. And you have 23 days, 14 hours, 21 minutes and 32, 33, 31, 30, 29 seconds. So there you go (laughs) to get in on that. So do it. So do it. 
Yes, and uh, I hope you guys were able to get over to the uh, the booth over there at the NRA uh, convention. Hmm. I talked to our bros at High Point, and uh, they said they had a really good show. They were glad to see uh, many of you, not all of you, because not all of you were there, but many of you were there. And, and and they're like everybody else. They're in a situation now. They're like, we were just starting to get caught up. And then bam. And then bam. The Satanist Democrats decided they were going to pull their, their freaking crap on us again. So I don't know what to tell you. All right, let's move over to Brownells bullet points. But but that new boom. All right, bing, bang, boom, bing, bang, boom. Brownells bullet points brought to you by our good friends at brownells.com. And if you, like me, texted BRN to 556223, then this last weekend you would have gotten a notification on your phone that says, hey, we have extended the Memorial Day sale, and these are the deals that you can get. Your I don't one. know how they're even able to still have deals. I know you're, you're like how if you're a manufacturer or, or retailer or wholesaler, how in the world do you still that's that's it's gotta be it's gotta be some fun round table meetings. You know? You're like, okay, we still have to give people discounts. What do you mean? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> we told those idiots last year to buy it. Now, now it's it's, it's crazy expensive and hard to find, and they all want they all want discounts. Uh, oh, you know what? They this is the economy we're living in, Jared. I noticed something this weekend. So the price of coffee is through the roof. You cannot get a. First of all, this is something. That's not new. It's been going on for a long time. When I was a kid, when your mom went to the store, she bought a pound of coffee. The bag was 16 ounces. It was a pound of coffee. Yeah, right. 12 ounces. So what happened, though, is the price of coffee went up, but people still expected. They expected to pay the same amount. So what the manufacturer started doing is they reduced the bag size to 12 ounces, but charged the same as they were previously charging. Well, now they can't even get away with that. So what they've done, what they're starting to do is they're dropping the bag size down to seven ounces. What? They're dropping the bag size down to seven ounces and pricing it lower so people aren't as pissed off. Right? Yeah. So that that's the new thing, man. That's crazy. It's it's like it's like the Whopper. It's like the Whopper or the Big Mac or the cheeseburger or whatever. You're like, no, it's still ninety nine cents. Let me tell you what, hippie. That little tiny ninety nine cent half ounce beef patty, whatever. Uh, it used to be ninety nine cents, and it was actually large. And and, and it, one cheeseburger was enough for an adult. That's the world in which we're living now. Thank you, Joe Biden, Democrats, scumbag, communists. Oh, uh, yeah, I noticed that this weekend. So Brownells, uh, what should you buy? And this is basically my uh, my advice to you guys. What should you have purchased, get secure before the Democrats and the normies back into panic mode? Because they're setting the table to do it. The uh, scumbag Democrats are setting the table to send the normies back into panic buying mode. Well, if you don't, then here's the weird thing. If you're listening to me and you don't already have your personal defense firearms, not really sure what you've been waiting for. But let's just say, let's just say you're new to the game and welcome. Congratulations and hi, how are you doing? Uh, I'm Paul Markle and you're shocked to hear everything that comes out of my mouth. So there are some inexpensive guns out there. The the SDS Gen 3, the, the uh, PX9 Gen 3, is a crazy good value. It, it's a crazy good value. Uh, comes with, with two magazines, all kinds of features. 
it, you know, if you're a brand new person, you probably don't need a threaded barrel because you probably don't have a can and it's going to be 12 months before you can get one anyway. Speaking of which, remember when the, the AFT lied to us about 10 years ago and said that, oh, if you do electronic form submission, we can turn the approvals around in 30 days. And so what did they do? So silencer shop 10 years yeah almost it's been nine. no way man so silencer shop said okay we'll, we'll play your little game we'll create a system for electronic for digital form submission and they're like yeah if you can if you guys can come up with digital form submission so we don't have to go through paperwork we can turn approvals around 30 days Liar. liars so they've had the electronic digital form submission, form four submission, form two, form one, all that. They've had it for years, years and years and years. Since we were in Biloxi, they've had it. And guess what? It's still 11 to 12 months to get your approval. You know why? Because they don't care. Because the fact is the AFT has you by the short hairs and they don't want to turn it around. They have no desire to turn it around. And you're a slave and you'll do what we say and you'll like it or not. You have no choice. So there's that. But uh, yeah, if you don't have a, a personal defense handgun, if you say, well, I priced the SDS and I can't really afford that. Uh, I can't really afford the PX9. I'm like, okay, then you're going to, you're going to be high point shopping. <laughs> but uh, there are things between high point and, and, uh, the uh, and the S SDS, the PX9. Speaking of which, there is a thing called the the SCCY, the Sky Pistol. Uh, a miracle happened. Did you guys look up in the sky on uh, on Friday? Did oh, you see a, ra see a rainbow? Oh, did no. you see a rainbow in the sky? I thought because a miracle happened. I thought you were talking about that meteor shower. No, 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 no. The miracle was your mom came to me and said, I want you to take me to the range. I want to go shooting. I said, excuse oh. me, what? Oh, said, what? She said, I've already arranged it with Jason. I already arranged the range time. I was like, uh, okay. Well, and it's after Friday now, and you're still alive, so that couldn't have been a reason. Yeah, so uh, I was like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, if she wanted to get rid of me, she could have done it a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. But so uh, I took her out, and she's got the uh, the, the Sky uh, CPX3. It's a 380 model. Oh, how'd she like it? She loved it. Wow. She loved it. She said, that's the most comfortable handgun I've ever shot. I am actually surprised because I, if I remember correctly, the 380 model snapped, felt no. more snappy than the nine millimeter. No, it was you're the remembering the opposite. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The nine, the, 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 the CPX one is more snappy than the, the 380. That's why I gave it to your mom. Okay. Um, and uh, she's a, uh, she, it was interesting because you know she's your mom is different than our vision is the opposite i'm i have i'm nearsighted i don't need glasses to see to read i don't need glasses to see stuff but if i want to see clearly the, the stuff that's across the street i now need the my glasses gone. on yeah but she's the opposite you see she can see stuff far away clearly but stuff that's close she has to have reading glasses and that's something that's an issue for uh, people. And, and it was actually a really good experience for me because now I'm able I was able to to coach her through it. She's like, well, I can't see I can't folk. I can't see the target and try and find the front sight at the same time. She, I can't do that. She's like, I can either see where I can either know where the target is. She goes, because if I try and because she was in a situation where if she focused on the front sight of the gun, the target was a blur to the point where she couldn't, she didn't like, she could not perceive it. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, and he's like, wow. Did you get her an EOTech? No, I, I well, I, on that? no, on the handgun. Yeah. I, I put an EOTech on the pistol. <laughs> I actually handed her my Glock with the red dot and she, she took like five minutes. She's like, I can't find this red dot. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and then eventually she found Turns it. Out, then she turned it on. And yeah, eventually, no, she found it and, and she was able to hit the target. And she's like, no, that'll take me forever. And I said, yeah, yeah it takes probably. a lot of practice. You, you, to if you're going to switch, we're all over the place here, like a shotgun. But if you're going to switch from iron sights to a red dot, you need to 
it's not, oh, I'm just going to put the red dot on and I'll never need to practice again. Well, wrong. What you just did is you actually helped the audience understand the process that you go through to help people solve problems that they have. Yeah. So it's like you, if this doesn't work, go to this. If that doesn't work, then try step three. And, yeah. and eventually, you know, you follow these things. And I don't know, is that a section in the first edition of the instructor manual? I can't remember. Yeah. Which yeah. I, didn't, I don't remember reading about it. Learning, like how yeah. processes of learning. Yes. And, okay. Okay. And training cues. I get, I learn better. And I think you're the same way. I learn better if I have like, if I can put my hands on it and what I know oh, yeah. that and in reading is if I I'm have a, a real I'm life a kinesthetic example, learner. Yeah. Yeah. If I have a, a real life example to draw the reading back to like, this is a perfect real life example. You took mom to the range. She had a problem. You fixed it with step a blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's, that's how my brain works. So there are guns for you guys to get uh, ammunition. I'm going to tell you this. If, if you plan to practice, train, work with your gun, you need to start thinking in thousand round increments. Now, right now, as I'm speaking the words into this microphone, you can get nine mil training ammo for about 31 cents a shot. That's not a good price. It's not. It's a crappy I price. I don't it think it's going to be better, though. But it's not getting better. It's as good if, as it's If, if get. you're out there thinking, well, I, I'm I'm with you, and I know I need some nine training, but I'm going to wait till it's back down to twenty cents a shot. It ain't going to happen, brother. Not with what's going on on planet Earth right now. It's not going to happen. So, and I can tell you this: the clo and what did I tell you guys? I told you in 2020. I said the closer it gets to the election, the worse it's going to get. The same exact thing's going to happen this year. So. If, if you're in your ammo locker and you're like, oh, man, I'm getting kind of low. I can see the bottom of the can. You better get it now. I'm not telling don't use credit cards and don't mortgage your house, but it's not going to be more prevalent and it's not going to be less expensive as the future goes on. Training ammo, you need to think in increments of a thousand. Practice ammo or I mean, a killer ammo, you know, you're fighting ammo or whatever. Uh you need to be thinking in increments of hundreds, you know, 100 rounds of hydroshock or whatever. Uh, you need to have a minimum, an absolute minimum of three good magazines for a handgun and six for a rifle. Six? Yeah, six. I said six. Uh, the good news is, is some of the stuff is all caught up now, like mags. They, they produce so many magazines that uh, they're basically giving them away. Uh, well, they're not giving them away, but they're super cheap. Uh, AR mags right now are super cheap. And the good ones, you can get the, the Brownells mil spec oh, ones. Wow, you yeah. can get the Magpul ones. Uh, magazines ten, ten bucks are, are good prices now. Those are, yeah, I said those are back down to normal. And if you get 10 of them, yeah, wow, that's, that's yeah. great. So there's no excuse not to have a half a dozen good new magazines for your rifle. So oh. accessories, uh, accessories is kind of like, you know, optics or whatever. Uh, they're the good news about accessories is they're not really crazy because when people panic by, they panic by guns and they panic by ammo. People generally don't panic by red dots. Uh, they don't panic by holsters. Um, so you, you're, you're kind of good in that regard, but I'm telling you, that as these as these communists, as these these uh, pieces of human excrement that are in Washington, D.C., these criminals, uh, as they push forward and they're, you know, we talked about this. When did we talk? Oh, I talked about it with uh, with Mark on Friday. You know, the the when a Democrat says how many children have to die for you to accept reasonable gun control, that's not a rhetorical question. Their, th their, their question is, how many of your children do we have to massacre for you to allow us to disarm you? That's disgusting. That is, that is the real, that is the reality of the world in which we're living right now. Okay. And if it makes you uncomfortable, good. It should make you uncomfortable. It's not a rhetorical question. When a Democrat says, how many kids have to die before you'll surrender your guns? They're looking for a number. 
And as things get get closer, I, when when I was on the radio with Mark uh, on Friday, he said he'd ha- he'd talked to all of his sponsors, and you know he has gun and ma- ammo sponsors and so forth. And he said they're all they're all seeing it. Dealers are contacting them. They're like, hey, how many of these can we get now? Jeez, yeah, the dealers, yeah. <sighs> Man, it's a great time to be a manufacturer. It's a crappy time. To well, be a it's it, yeah, but the thing is, the manufacturers they're getting they're getting hammered. Yeah, it's it's, and, it's, and it's interesting like, all around the board. Yeah, so the manufacturers like, dude, calm down. We can only do this so fast. And the, yeah, know. but the the manufacturer doesn't have to deal with the end customer. Yeah, they that that is the good the, news. They, they don't have yeah. to deal with the end user. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! So, yep, that's 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 the world in which we live right now, guys. So I'm I'm telling you, before the before the Democrats push the normies uh, into panic mode, and I don't want to hear some crap about oh, hoarders, oh, hoarders. Everybody in this audience has had a chance all summer long, all year long. Uh, you know, if you don't have what you need, it's your own fault. It's your own fault. All right, I'm going to be quiet now, and uh, I'm going to let Zach talk for a second. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out shopsotg.com today and see for yourself. The homeroom is brought to you by Crossbreed. When you go there, use the promo code SOTTG. Save some money. Be a cool guy. All right. All right, Jared, you have the OutdoorLife.com story open. Yeah, 13 yards in one second. That's Why right. Never outrun a charging bear. Well, they just gave up the the, nut of the story right there. Yeah, I was like, well, I read anything else. I guess I'm done. I'm moving there on. There is a graphic image warning here, though. Bear oh, there is. Sometimes happen so quickly. That there's nothing you can do to stop them, and you certainly cannot run. Well, if you zigzag. Mm. just like they say about crocodiles and whatnot but in yeah. reality you just run a straight line they couldn't catch you anyway yeah editor's note says we originally told the story back in 2016 when bob eater told his chilling account of a brutal bear attack to tyler Friel, who spent a lot of time hunting in grizzly country the story is a sobering reminder that although we may think we have bear safety figured out reality can be much different it's one well, of those things you don't really know until you know. Mm. It seems like every spring here in Alaska, we are faced with stark reminders of how dangerous bears can be. Can I stop this- you right there? No. Okay. I tell you what, read the first paragraph because I've got to editorialize. Okay. Especially in the spring, after a winter of not really having to worry about it, we can get really complacent. It's been a somewhat early spring here this year, and this was back in 2016. And already there have been at least two confirmed maulings by either grizzlies or brown bears. So I got it. We talked about this earlier. Did we talk about this on the pre-show pre-show about how it is that not not remembering history or not learning from history? They're like, it seems like every year we have to be reminded, okay, as adult humans, right? At some point, we have to take responsibility for our own lives. Right. Every year, it's, 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 it's almost like the, uh, the first snow of the year and people are wrecking their cars like lunatics. And you're like, it's Minnesota. It snows every year. What are you doing? Why are you acting like this is the first time you, you know, how many of you live in an area where, you know, come November, December, the first snow when it's like a quarter inch? People are losing their minds. You're like, is this first snow you've ever seen? Did you just come here from Mars? And this is the first time you ever saw snow? What, what is going on? We've got to. 
I mean, I, I know I keep going back to, uh, you know, history and we talk about the, you know, the development, Elmer Keith and the development of the 44 Magnum and why that's not new. But I, I digress. I digress. So that, well, if you draw a parallel to self-defense and, and tactical training, then there's also the same thing that goes on there where people don't really, it's like the thought process, it's not going to happen to me because I'm a good person and blah, blah, blah. It's probably the same thing with car wrecks and bear attacks and everything else. It's like, well, it won't happen to me because I'm special or whatever. And then it does happen to you and you're like, oh, dang, I could have well, been more prepared probably. It, it also doesn't help when you have people in the media that, that, Every, every single animal attack, extremely rare, almost never happens well, until it does. Might be true, but it still does happen. So Yeah, it's like it, that doesn't help you when you're the one being mauled by the bear. You're like, hold on, Mr. Bear, this is extremely rare, and it almost never happens. Except that we have stories like every month of bears or mountain lions or coyotes or wolves or whatever or even bobcats, <laughs> even bobcats. Yeah. Maybe there's just too many people on the earth. Who knows? Uh, you, you, are you down with the, 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 uh, Klaus Schwab oh, and the no, new world no. order. Yeah. We are going to starve a billion people to death. Uh, even though I'm in bear country frequently and have several close encounters, I always get complacent. Because I know the chances are slim. Wow, I just, just literally just said this. Wow. I know the chances are slim that I'll be attacked when I'm unprepared. The <sighs> unfortunate fact about bear attacks, though, is that if we knew they were going to happen, they wouldn't. See, that's, that's exactly what I was just saying. It's Jared, right. what is the hierarchy? What is painted on the window? What is on the wall in tactical response? The hierarchy Mindset? of self-defense. Tactic. mindset skill and gear tactic skill gear mindset what this guy just did is he explained the failure mindset of everyone who whatever was mugging victim whatever that's the that is mindset it, it determines your choices how you behave we talked about this year. Remember how we, the guy, you're like, my wife's like, I get home, I'm relaxing. And the wife's like, hey, did, did you grab, remember to grab milk? No. Well, I need it to finish dinner. So you're all in your relaxed clothes. You've taken off your gun and everything. And, you're like, and so you grab your keys and you're thinking, I'm only going to be gone for 15 minutes. What could possibly happen to me? In the 15 minutes it takes me to leave here, run to the store, go in, get the milk, go back to the parking lot, get my car, and come back. Nothing will happen. That's mindset. Nothing happens until it happens. Mindset. And what he this guy just said, he he just he's like, Well, I know that that probably won't happen. That's the difference well, uh, between the victim I, I and think the that victor. he was acknowledging that that mindset exists. And he um, he probably was just being empathetic with the audience. Yeah. He says, in that way, bear attacks are a little like lightning. We know that when the conditions are ripe for a strike, but we don't always take the necessary precautions to avoid one. And just like lightning, by the time you realize you are vulnerable, things happen so fast it can be hard to avoid the consequences. And so, if you put it, if you put a story around it. Mm -hmm. Is exactly what dad just said about the dude that comes home and he's like, man, I don't want to go get this milk because I, you know, I'm relaxing. It takes me so long to put all this stuff back on. So I'm just going to, you know, put my, put my shirt on or put a jacket on or whatever and go. Just screw it. Yeah. I mean, I had, Jared, do you remember when the in story? Reality, the, the 30 seconds that it takes to, you know, if you have a bag with stuff already in it, you just grab the bag and go and you're good to go. But yep. the, you know, the, the five minutes even that it takes to put all your stuff back on is well worth the, the, if you do a benefit risk analysis, 
it's well worth the time that it takes to put it on. For those guys who've been with us for a while, you remember my story about my good friend who's a U.S. Army Special Forces combat veteran mm. who encountered that situation. Yep. We're running late. Crap. We're all, we're all dragging the anchor. We got to get little Jimmy to school. Crap. I'm in my flip-flops, my, my shorts, T-shirt. Grab my keys and my phone out the door because all we're doing is taking Jimmy to school, coming back. Nothing is possibly going to happen. And then done that route 500 times, 10 minutes later, there's a road rage incident and the guy's standing there with a knife in his hand and you've got your gym shorts, your t-shirt and your cell phone. And you say, how does that happen? Well, it happens because of human complacency mindset. That's when, you know, Jared and I, we, we came to these microphones and this is years. So a lot of people are probably new and they're like, what? We talked about the go bag or the, what do we call it? The, the everything bag or the all no, bag or the whatever. We should call it the fundamental four pack. The four pack. Uh, but you can't have too many things because then it, get, it gets lost. But yeah, it's called the four pack. Uh, and we actually, we did one and we assembled it and showed it to you guys. And, and what it is is it's a, a sling bag, a single strap bag. There, there's all kinds of them online. And you put in the fundamental four. And what are those? Lethal, sharp, bright, medical. Lethal, sharp, bright, medical. And so, and you hang it on a hook. And here's the deal. The stuff that's in the bag stays in the bag. You say, oh, well, I'll put my, I'll put my favorite gad in it. But then sometimes I want to play with my favorite gas. So I'll take it out and then I'll put it back in. And then eventually what happens is you just don't. And then when you grab the bag, the whole point of the bag is to have everything in the bag when it's right. Yeah. Oh, uh, the bag stays filled. The bag stays filled. We don't take stuff out of the bag. You know, we don't use it for something else and blah, blah, blah. And if you do, you, you have to discipline yourself mindset to put it back. Oh, uh, this right here, that's the reason I wanted to talk about this, other than the fact that he's like, sometimes there's just nothing you can do. And Elmer Keith is up there on a the cloud. And he's like, yes, there is something you can do. What is this defeatist mentality? It's 240 grains of something you can do. Why did I do all that work? It was like, it was kind of like, you know, Elmer Keith was kind of like the Moses of handgun hunting and handguns. He, he went up onto a mountain in Idaho. He stayed up there for a while and he came back down and he said, look what I have for you. It's called the model 29 44 Magnum. And if you shoot a bear, it will fornicate into another direction with this. <laughs> It's like, why did I give you guys this thing for you to forget about it? I, I did all that work. And I was like, here you go. Take this. And this is your bear medicine. And then people in 2019, 2016, 20, like, we, we, you know, we don't know what to do. We're just not sure. I mean, sometimes there's nothing you can do. So just lay down and take it. <laughs> You know what, what, what I wish I could do, Jared? I wish I could resurrect Elmer Keith for one day and show him a can of bear spray. <laughs> You'd be like, what? Uh, that's interesting. You're like, he's like, well, hell, if I'd have had that, I wouldn't have had a vent the 44 mag. <laughs> Shazam! <laughs> Shazam! I wouldn't have had to invent the 44 mag if only someone would have told me about bear spray in 1962. <laughs> oh, man. So a bear, what does it say? How fast? 13 yards in one second. Yeah, it says that in the title. So that's, ah, that's pretty fast. But can a bear go 1,200 feet per second? <laughs> No, it can't. I don't think a bear can go 1,200 feet per second. <laughs> well, you just want to shoot bears. No, I just want to stay alive. People don't get killed in bear attacks. 
They don't. Well, it almost never happens. Almost never? Okay, there you go. You almost never get robbed on the way to the gas station. You almost never get robbed at the grocery store. So, why I was would you just looking at the carry a gun of this attack. The and owies. The, the, yeah, the dude said it, that it, the attack lasted no longer than 15 seconds, but crazy amount of damage was <sighs> Yeah. There. That's this chest is four claws. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. And 13 yards in one second. I was actually talking to somebody this past weekend that actually two guys that don't like to carry their gun with a round in the chamber. And we all, we've already boiled the reason that that happens is because the person that's carrying the gun isn't competent or confident enough in their own skills that they won't shoot themselves. And, but they, they, they say that, you know, it's part of my draw process. Like, I don't care if it's part of your draw process or not. It's still going <sighs> to 13 yards in one second. If it adds more than a second onto your draw process, which it does, we've done studies oh, on video know. for this. We know that it adds more than one second, no matter how fast you are. Then the, that, that second, that time that you're, you're taking to chamber the round could be the reason that you die. Yeah. Or it could be the reason that someone who's relying upon you for their protection dies. Yeah. You, you got kids with you or whatever. Yeah. Your wife, your kids. So, yeah, I don't, those kind of people, I don't even know how to talk to them anymore. It's like, wow, well, we're, just, we're so far. We're so, there's so much information available. I mean, I can see when people weren't carrying guns in America, you know, well, like in the eighties, well, but everybody the 90s. has their own there. There's this path that's been, now there is a well-worn path from not carrying a gun to carrying a gun, but everybody still has to go down that path and there's still waypoints, right? So some people are at that point in, in their carry journey where they don't trust themselves enough not to carry, or they don't trust themselves enough to carry with a actually fully loaded gun. And the next step after that is getting training or what do you have to do to go from not trusting yourself to trusting yourself? And so the best thing that we can do is just help them expedite that path ex expedite that journey because the we've already we're we're at the front of this path where we've been doing it for so long or we've been part of the wearing the path down for people so now all we can do is we've put these waypoints in place now we just have to help expedite from point a to point b yeah so part of what jared just said the big problem is uh i'm going to carry i'm going to carry a handgun for self-defense cool i think you should do that that's a fantastic idea but i don't have time or money or inclination to take training because i'm a smart person i know what i'm doing no you're not and no you don't and if you haven't gone to training and you're carrying a gun you're like, what are you trying to say boy you think it should be mandated no i don't think it should be mandated i think you should be a mature responsible adult and make the correct decision and do the right thing without the state having to club you over the head. See, that's the difference between freedom and slavery is freedom is making the right choice. And when you make the right choice, you have liberty. Remember that, Jared? Or no, actually, it's the opposite, liberty. Liberty is the ability to make good choices. Mm -hmm. And when you that's have liberty and you make good choices, then you end up with freedom. Mm -hmm. So... If you're out there and you're like, well, I'm a smart guy. I've been shooting my whole life. First of all, no, you haven't. Second of all, you're not that smart. Uh, when I it know comes one kid that has been shooting his whole life. There's one kid. There's one person. One kid. On that, and if there's videographic evidence of that. Other than that, you have not been shooting your whole life. You were not in diapers, cacking rounds. Yeah. No, you weren't. Quit lying. <laughs> my experience is that w anybody that says that thing in the first place if you say i'm smart enough doesn't matter what the skill is that you're talking about i'm smart enough i know how to do that you probably need to definitely get training oh yeah 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 i'm a smart person i don't know what to do really cool Luckily, here's a wrench go here's a wrench go fix that, that engine person. yeah <laughs> go, go go fix that engine go change the fan belt Go put Has a new, anybody said that to you? Go like, put a new water pump on there. Like, in what? person. Like in what? the real world, people have said, I'm smart enough. I'll figure that out. Oh, not lately. 
like when in my youth when i used to spend a lot of time at gun shops and gun shows and you know that kind of a thing yeah oh yeah people are like all right how hard can it be i've had i've had someone say how hard can it be you just point it pull the trigger oh uh, wow. yeah that's believable yeah it's true yeah it's how hard could it be can't be that hard especially because i'm spoiled in the regard that i have never really had to spend a lot of time around gun shops to get the information that i want to learn so that's it, it's a difference in my experience versus your experience you know you spend a lot of times in gun shops where there's definitely fuds oh and, my social media my social media was standing in a gun shop yeah in secondhand smoke and coffee um, <laughs> secondhand smoke and coffee yeah <laughs> that, that was the, my that was my social media my my 19 20 year old social media was being in an old school gun shop where they had chairs and standing ashtrays you know remember those stand-up ashtrays yeah i remember uh, the the one in worcester had those that had yeah chairs and, sitting right there and then the ashtrays and people just you know and when you walked into the gun and people like what they were smoking inside of a business what yeah but see the people who went in there they all smoked they they weren't crybabies yeah yeah i didn't i didn't smoke cigarettes i didn't you know but i didn't cry yeah. said, you need to not do that because it offends me because charlie was behind the counter smoking yeah. <laughs> that was just gonna happen uh but and and i did learn some good things there yeah you know People who had experience would tell you, you know, uh, when I bought my first pump action defensive shotgun from Nick, he's like, well, if you're going to practice, use this. But if you're if you think you might have to use it for real and he reached down, and he got the double up buck and he put it on. He goes, this this is what you load. So you don't practice with this because it's way too expensive. But and you can practice with buckshot, but you're, you're not. You know, let's face it. You're not going to shoot 100 rounds of double up buck. Yes, I am. Okay, whatever. Um, you need to do that. And something actually going back to our shotgun discussion, you need to pattern your shotgun so you know. Uh, yeah, that goes back to the whole, ah, I'll never miss. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, uh, I want you to A, join us by going to getsotg.com. That's getsotg.com. That way you can be there uh, for the grad program. And uh, until then, remember, you're a beginner once. And you're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.